Hello everyone, my name is Brennan Marr. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And thank you for tuning in. The page turners, they were not my Star Wars podcast. Happy Easter to everybody. I hope you enjoyed Easter or Passover. That you at least were able to enjoy it as much as you could. Uh, given the current circumstances, it may have made things a bit strange this year, but I hope that you got to spend time with those you love, reflecting on what matters most, and maybe do some uh, remote contacting of your families. It's been an interesting Easter for me. It was a wonderful Easter Sunday, but also my grandfather passed away early this morning. Uh, he had taken a turn for the worse over the weekend. Uh, about four months ago, he had been diagnosed with lung cancer. Well, actually, let me rephrase that. He had been, he's been diagnosed with lung cancer quite a while ago. But he was given about six months to live about four months ago. More because there was nothing more that could be done for him. So, unfortunately, he passed away early this morning. I did call him on Saturday. I was, he wasn't able to speak. But I was able to say sort of a goodbye to him. So, a bit of a bittersweet Easter for me. So today's topic will go along with honoring my grandfather. Now my grandpa lived, um, you know, he was 83. He lived a good long life and he had seen many things, he'd done many things, he served in the Navy during the height of the Cold War, you know, the early 60s. And even was in the Navy during the Cuban Missile Crisis and had my grandma and my dad and my uncle move to from San Diego to Colorado so they'd be uh, out of the line of fire should a war erupt. Should those missiles have been fired because surely they would have probably been fired on San Diego considering that was the big naval base. So, Grandpa served honorably there. Grandpa has traveled to many places and done many things. and So he lived a good full life. As a result of his long life doing many things, he was very wise. So I thought, in order to honor him, let us discuss the wise men and women of Star Wars. Now, the archetype of the old wise man is an archetype as old as mankind itself. And, theoretically, is an idea that is contained in the cultural imagination of all human beings. George Lucas uh, captured this essence originally with the character of Obi-Wan Kenobi as played by the great Sir Alec Guinness. Obi-Wan is definitely in the mold of other characters like Dumbledore, like Gandalf, and other characters of that type that are the idea of the old wise man. The man who has much experience in the world and imparts great lessons to our young hero. It is part of the hero's journey as outlined by Joseph Campbell. 
Often the old wise man will impart something of importance to the main character. In Obi-Wan's case, the talisman, the thing given to Luke, to start Luke's journey is the lightsaber. So let us discuss, there are many old wise men and women in the Star Wars saga. Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, the Qui-Gon to a degree, um, Han Solo steps into that role in The Force Awakens. Luke becomes an old, the old wise man after his journey is nearly complete. Or is complete. We'll get to that in a minute. And uh, we also see Leia take this role, Maz Kanata, and many others in the legends and canon and other parts of the story. So Let's discuss these characters. We'll stick with the major ones. The ones that I want to focus mostly on today are from the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy. As I said, the prequel trilogy, we have characters like Yoda and Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon is definitely breaks the rules a bit of a of the old wise man archetype, as he's a bit more reckless and daring. Mace Windu arguably falls into this role, but as we learn, Mace is not that wise, given that his understanding of the threat of the Sith was rather clouded by his own sense of that he knew everything, kind of guy, you know. You get that sense in The Phantom Menace that he's like, oh, this is nonsense. Chosen One, the Sith, what are you talking about? So unfortunately, the darkness created by Palpatine had clouded the wisdom that Mace might otherwise have possessed. So, so let's go with, let's begin with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, as we know, and as we saw in the prequels, and even Obi-Wan references, in The Empire Strikes Back, he was not always a wise old man. He would describe himself as reckless as a youth. But like all things, the experiences of his life gave him much wisdom. Wisdom to point Luke in the right direction. Wisdom to impart an item that would be of great value to Luke. Wisdom to teach Luke to not be so impatient. To not be so inclined to believe he couldn't do it. He had to have confidence in himself. And Obi-Wan, of course, imparts valuable advice throughout the entire saga, being the one to tell Luke to seek out Yoda, being the one to, in a roundabout way, reveal that Leia is Luke's sister. And even being the one to say that Luke had to confront Darth Vader. Now, it would seem that Obi-Wan was not inclined to believe that Vader could ever be redeemed. That may have been his one th failing, but I'm sure he was never more happy to be proven wrong. Luke then goes, at Obi-Wan's uh, suggestion, to Dagobah and meets Master Yoda. Arguably the wisest being we ever encounter in Star Wars. Yoda, like Obi-Wan, teaches Luke the ways of the Force. 
It teaches us some valuable lessons about letting go of the things that hold him back. Fear, doubt, and teach him to see the universe in a different way. The old wise men of most stories impart not only wisdom, but practical advice to those they teach. Advice on how to d learn patience. Advice on how to quiet their minds, because youth, as we know, are very more inclined to be reckless. Age gives us wisdom. At least hopefully it does, as we experience more of the world. Yoda, being 900 years old, had experienced many things. It does make me wonder, will Yoda feature at all in these new High Republic-based novels? Which take place 200 years before the movies. Yoda says that he's trained Jedi for 800 years. So that would put him in there. I doubt he would feature very heavily, but I wonder if we'll see him. And like Obi-Wan, Yoda points Luke in the direction he needs to go. To face down Vader, at least to return to the Jedi. But, of course, Luke did not heed Yoda and Obi-Wan's advice when they told him in the Empire Strikes Back to stay on Degama. Luke went and got his butt kicked and lost a hand. And they weren't able to save Han, you know. Everything went wrong. Luke had not learned his lesson. But in the interim between the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, it would seem that Luke learned to be a little bit more calm. To not be so judgmental, to not be so quick to make decisions. Because when we see him in Return of the Jedi, it seems that his worldview is a little bit different. So the wisdom imparted to him by Yoda and Obi Wan paid off. And because of Yoda and Obi Wan, Luke saved the day. And saved his father. So, the wisdom imparted by his elders proved to save the galaxy. And some could argue what they believed was incorrect. Yoda and Obi Wan believed that Luke couldn't be saved, but Luke believed he could. So, Luke even taught them something, which is interesting. But I don't think he ever would have taught them that if he had not listened to their advice in the first place. So it's kind of a, a loop. It's kind of a chicken and egg situation. So the wisdom of Obi-Wan and Yoda helped Luke very much on his journey and helped him to see the world differently. And that, I think, is what the older generation of any time hopes that they can impart to the younger generation, is to see the world in a different light. Okay. I'm going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will discuss the wise elders of the sequel trilogy. Hello there, this is Brennan Marr, host of Page Turners They Were Not, a Star Wars podcast. And I'm here to tell you about Anchor. 
Anchor is the best way to make a podcast. Why is that? Well, first off, it's free. Yes, you heard me right. Anchor is free. Anchor has all the tools you need to make a podcast. From your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you on various platforms. Including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can make money from the podcast. And get this, with no minimum listenership. That means you can make money even if no one listens to your podcast. That, of course, is not ideal, as Anchor will allow you to spread your podcast. Bring in more viewers, and you can make more money because of it. Everything you need to make a podcast is in one place on Anchor. If you're interested, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you, and may the force be with you. Okay, we're back. Now, let's discuss the sequel trilogy. I thought it was very, very interesting in The Force Awakens. That the role of the wise old man falls to Han Solo. Interesting. Interesting choice. Now, similar to Qui-Gon, Han Solo is a wise old man that breaks the rules a bit. Both as a character in storytelling and in the actual story. Han doesn't play by the rules. But Han is older, a little wiser, and has seen things that have changed his view. Han went from being a skeptic about the nature of the Force to seeing it firsthand to embracing it as truth. Now Han is not exactly as wise as say Obi-Wan or Yoda, but he does fit that archetypal role in Force of Wake, being the ones to the one to help our characters on their journey. By um, offering Ray a job on the Falcon, I guess he feels. I guess once he gets to know Ray a little bit more, he feels more fatherly toward her. And I think maybe to some degree, based on what we saw in Solo, maybe Khan sees Ray and goes, I was there once. I was there. You know, stuck on a planet, orphaned. But we assume, we don't really know, but kind of not satisfied with his lot in life and just wanting to get away. And so, if I'm wanting to get away, we can assume that his relationship with his parents, if it ever really existed, was not very good. But regardless, that feeling of being alone and wanting to get away. Ray's problem was she could never bring herself to go to stay away. Deluding herself into thinking that if she stayed, her family would come back. When she knew the truth, they were never coming back. So maybe Han felt a bit of kinship, and that's why he offered her a job. He also was able to teach Ray that the Force was real. And kind of set her in their direction. Now, his intention was to get rid of Finn and Ray as quickly as they got to Maz's castle. 
or rather to deliver them with BB-8 to Muzz and let Muzz do the rest. Muzz, of course, told Hun, you've been running away for too long. Hun was running away because his son fell to the dark side. That kind of broke their family up, and Hun kind of buried himself in his old ways of being a smuggler. But he couldn't escape the fact that he needed to confront this. Leia was able to convince him to join the fight and confront Ben Solo. Han knew he was a gunner, in my opinion. There was a slight glimmer of hope that maybe he could save Ben. But he knew that probably, most likely, he would die. But he was willing to do it. Out of the love for his son. This is a sign of Han Solo that we have not seen yet, and I was glad we got to see it. His wisdom finally caught up with him. Willing, being wise enough to put his life on the line to save a loved one. Okay, so that's fine. Then it brings us to Maz Kanata. Maz is sort of a, a wise old sage who's seen many things. Is not a force user with trust in its power. Yet again, a talisman giving the lightsaber to Finn. Now she tries to give it to Ray and Ray rejects it. She gives it to Finn. And eventually it 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 comes into Ray's hands. And Ray, through letting the force flow through her. He's able to defeat Kylo Ren, even though she's never used the lightsaber. Yet again, like the talisman, the, the lightsaber, Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber, is an heirloom of the Skywalkers, and twice has been used as the talisman that sets a hero on a journey. Ray then accepts her destiny in the train to become a Jedi. Because of the wisdom of Maz Kanata. Maz also offers helpful advice throughout the sequel trilogy. And um, is present at the final battle. Though her presence in The Rise of Skywalker wasn't necessary, but she did uh, impart some wisdom, as she usually does. And then, of course, Luke. Now, Luke, when, when we first heard that the original cast would be returning to the sequel trilogy, my thought was that Luke would step into the role of Obi-Wan. Which is only true from a certain point of view. Luke, of course, has become a bit worn down because of Ben Solo's betrayal. But also, Luke is wracked with guilt for what he did in a brief moment where a bad decision had terrible consequences the spark that lit the fire. But Luke, Ray was able to help Luke realize his potential. And with lots of help from Ray and Yoda, Luke finally became the wise old hero that I thought he would be. Yo. Know, and Luke's biggest moment in being the wise old man comes in the Rise of Skywalker. Imparting wisdom to Rey, talking to Rey about what needs to be done. 
and in replicating what Yoda did, lifting the X-Wing out of the water. Now, I think that scene in the music and the imagery is definitely meant to parallel what Yoda did for Luke, signifying, to me at least, that Luke had finally become the wise old master we knew he was. Also, when he caught the lightsaber and when Ray was going to chuck it, Luke, in that moment, the story came full circle. The story set with Luke from The Last Jedi to The Rise of Skywalker came full circle when he caught the lightsaber, recognizing that he could no longer reject his destiny. Even in post-mortem, Luke was able to impart sage advice the same way that Obi-Wan did. And even Yoda did. These Jedi who can be force ghosts are still powerful tools and imparting wisdom to our heroes on their journey. And our final wise elder I want to discuss is Leia. I was so pleased to see that Leia was acting as Jedi Master to Rey. Truly extraordinary. We also got to see a bit of Leia's backstory to see that she did train as a Jedi with Luke, but fear kind of prevented her from going further. It's Luke who gives this horrible piece of advice when he says, Confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi. Leia eventually did confront that fear. But at that time, she, her knowledge of the Force, which was limited, was still enough to teach Rey. And I love the fact that Rey calls her master. And Leia, of course, imparted probably the most important piece of advice that Rey ever got. Which was, never be afraid of who you are. Leia knows that, because when Leia discovered her father was Lord Vader, that was quite shocking. You know, and so I think she could understand when Rey learns her heritage, which Leia knew, I'm assuming because Leia sensed it. Leia was able to impart that advice because that proved valuable to Rey that Rey could choose who she was and not be afraid of where she came from and choosing to be who she wanted to be. So I'm glad to see that Leia got to step into the role of the wise old elder. So those are some of my thoughts on the wise old elders, the wise elders of Star Wars. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think is the most important advice given by any of these heroes. And to all of you out there, listen to your elders. They have a lot of wisdom they can impart. My name is Brendan Moore. That noise you hear is my ventilator. And thank you for tuning in to Fate's Journeys They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. May the Force be with you.